السادة الزملاء أخلص تحياتي لكم أنا الدكتور هشام فتحي أستاذ طب الأطفال جامعة قناة السويس في البرزنتيشن دي أنا أكلمكم على الكروموزومال أبريشنز as a part of the clinical genetics basic areas first the cell structure cell structure can say somatic cell structure is composed of first of cell membrane and then we have a nucleus with a nucleolus in it and then we have cytoplasm and we have a, in the cytoplasm we have sub cytoplasmic organelles like Golgi apparatus like endoplasmic reticulum mitochondria and other organelles like lysosomes and others speak about the cell cycle cell cycle in human cells or can say in the blood cells it takes about three days really to multiply so when we think about the process it starts with what we call uh, in the uh, you know we have a cell uh, you can say somatic cell which has 23 pairs of chromosomes and it starts from G1 which is a phase one where we have only the chromosome composed of one chromatids is one piece and then in this G1 it is a preparatory phase where the chromosomes start to or can say get from the cytoplasm uh, the nucleotides needed to replicate the uh, you know the amount of DNA needed for the process of mitosis in mitosis you know they have the daughter cells they have the same number of the chromosomes in the mother cell so each mother cell will give two cells each of them have the same number of chromosomes like the mother cell then we have the synthetic phase where in the synthetic phase we have duplication of the amount of gna and then in the g2 we have two chromatids each chromatid have the same amount of DNA present in the normal chromosome and then we'll go to the process of replication where starting with the process of mitosis which is consists of four phases in mitosis as I said we have the mother cell and we have the daughter cells we have, who have the same number of chromosomes like the mother cell however we have another type of division which is called the reduction division or meiosis and meiosis occurs either in the eggs or sperms which is germ cells in order to get in males the uh, sperms and in females we get the eggs and then by their uh, you know uh, by by getting together we got the zygote and we got the embryo after that so we speak about the process of mitosis because it's important to understand a, a lot about chromosomal aberrations first we have what we call the prophase this is a part of the mitosis process where there will be shortening of the chromosomes and they start to appear even under the light microscope you know in the uh, in the nuclear membrane and then we have the metaphase where the chromosomes start to be arranged in the equatorial plane in the center of the cell itself after resolution of the nuclear membrane and then in each pole of the cell we have a centriole which is a starting like spindle and it has a macrotubules they that they got to the centromere of each chromosome and they make this sort of the mesh like the mesh of you know like uh, this this mesh which is uh, you know 
uh, which is you know uh, in the second part which is the metaphase and then the anaphase where there will be separation of each chromatid of each chromosome or, or from these two chromatids longitudinally okay or vertically so they go in each type there will be shortening of the spindle and then each group of chromosomes go to one can say side of the cytoplasm and in the telophase there will be separation of the cytoplasm to give me two cells and this is the process as we say in G1 and the interphase and then we go to G2 with two chromosomes that they have the same number of chromosomes like the mother cell. In the reduction division process, we have what we call it reduction division because in each cell by the end of the meiosis, we have, uh, we can say, either a sperms or the ovum, they have only 23 chromosomes. So in this process, we have like a prophase, this is metaphase one, where there will start to have duplication of the chromosomes. And then the chromosomes, they start to be arranged in the center or in the equatorial plane. But in this time, the each chromosome, complete chromosome, two identical chromosomes, they get side by side and we see this process. And then there will be separation of each chromosome to one side of the, uh, you know, to one side of the cell, and this was divided into two cells, and then each one of these cells start to be div divided again, like the process of mitosis, into two cells. As I said, it has half the number of chromosomes of the mother cell. However, in this part, when they start to be arranged, these chromosomes in the equatorial plane, it has a very important process that, that causes mixture of the genes present in the mother and in the father, you can say chromosomes, by exchange of an identical segment of the chromatids. And this process occurs between each identical chromosomes and this process called crossing over so what about chromosomal analysis which equals karyotyping because this is how we examine you know chromosomes in the old you know this was actually now it became like a routine type of examination in many of the hospitals in that uh, you know, in many of the countries, especially developed countries, because it is, you don't need any special, we can say, uh, uh, techniques which is very vigorous or difficult to do. We just need a light microscope and a good lab, sterile lab. So in the chromosome preparation, which are called chromosomal culture, the most common use type which we get a peripheral blood lymphocyte culture so we take just a blood sample from the from the vein and then we culture it in a special cultured media and this cultured media may contour, may contain a fetal calf serum or other nutritive material and then we have a phytohemagglutinin which is a mitogenic substance which enhance multiplication of the cells so we have more cells in the stage of mitosis we incubate these cells in the in this culture media with the phytohemagglutinin for 37 degree in 37 degree for three days and then when we starting to get this mitosis we use the colchicine the colchicine we used it in the treatment of gout and some other disease like mediterranean fever and others and this prevents spindle formation that's why we get this chromosome now you know in the cell 
you know, without spindle, so we can study them. Then we put the cells in a hypotonic solution, mostly hypotonic saline, to disperse the chromosomes from each other. And then we use a special material called carnoy, which is a glacial acetic acid, to clear the metaphase by distracting the RBCs and then washing it so we get a clear you can metaphases. Then we start staining, and in the staining process, we do what we call, call a banding technique using trypsin or using the heat or kinacrine mustard in order to get what we call banding of the chromosome because we found that chromosomes, which is structured of groups or uh, groups or amalgamating of DNA and you know and and proteins histo histones or non histones so when we uh, when, when, when we expose it to diluted trypsin or to the heat or to the clearacrine master each chromosome have specific type of bands which is, which is characteristic for it. And then we start having this karyotype preparation and now we have a special microscope, what you call microscope station, where we can uh, photograph these metaphases and then it ca we can work with it like, you know, pre preparing our culture. In karyotyping, we use a special, we can say, classification. It's called Denver classification. In the Denver classification, we arrange it or we classify chromosomes according to their size, according to the site of the centromere, and according to... So these were the two main criteria that we, you know, that we arrange the chromosomes by. So we have we divide it into group A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And then we have an X, we can say sex chromosomes, either X chromosome or Y chromosome. So it's XX in females and XY in males. The chromosomes, as I said, it constitutes of two chromatids which are connected in an air with sub with material or with substance called kinetochore in the centromere where well, when we spoke about you know being arranged in the equatorial plane and then this microtubule from the centriole they got attached to this kinetochore so we have three we we classify chromosomes into three types either according to the site of the centromere either metacentric chromosomes where the short arm and the long arm are similar in size and then we have submetacentric where we have the p short p r and then longer q and then we have the acrocentric chromosomes we we deal chromosomatic tarafeia which we have you know very short P, uh, R, and then longer uh, uh, Q, and then in this, uh, you know, short arm, we have a stalk and satellite in these ones. And these are very important when we speak about, it's mainly in group D, which is uh, 13, 14, and 15, and G, which is 21 and 22, which are very common cause of we can say cause of chromosomal aberrations as we will see later and this with this bending process bending process it happened after uh, an international major uh, project which started in early uh, 1990 uh, in, in the last century where we uh, you know the whole world worked in this process of getting or defining 
the genetic map by defining the site of each gene and getting its function so now we know we have a map of more than 99 percent of all the genes in the body that we know where they are and what are their functions and as we see here for example in chromosome 6 which is very important for immunity it has an hla gene complex as we see here in the short arm of chromosome 6. We have other ways of uh, chromosome painting uh, in order to identify some other you know problems or other uh, uh, chromosomal aberrations like this one which is a whole chromosome painting where we each chromosome because it's structure of protein and DNA it takes special color and as we see here in between nine chromosome 9 and chromosome <coughs> 22 that part of the chromosome 9 really get attached to chromosome sorry part of the chromosome 22 is attached to chromosome 9 which is 922 chromosome which is called philadelphia chromosome and i wonder if you know that in chronic myeloid leukemia this is the, con the chromosomal aberration that is present in uh, you know in most type especially adult type of chronic myeloid leukemia we have other ways for examination of chromosomes is called fish technique which is fluorescence in situ hybridization where uh, you know in order to identify chromosomes because in the culture it takes around two weeks which is again a very long time for us to take a decision about how to deal with you know with this embryo or with this uh, you know of, of this uh, if there will be chromosomal aberration that we may go into abortion and so the time factor is very important for us so we identified the number of chromosomes by the by getting a single strand dna you know in dna is a double strand so we managed to get a single strand of this dna and then we put a label on it like uh, you know uh, showing this interface and this labeling phosphoric substances so we can identify the number of chromosomes like trisomy 21 we can get three point as we see here and we have two only two in the you know these are the normal which are the controls so it is rapid that we can get the results within 24 uh, hours and make sure that the patient either having specific chromosomal aberration especially trisomies or triple x's and other chromosome aberrations then we look to the lion hypothesis which again we know that female they have an xx chromosomes and male they have an xy chromosome and xx they have much more genes comparison to xy but so that in compared to the y chromosome y chromosome have an important gene that transforms mullerian duct into wolfian duct which is from the female who can say uh, 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 development into a male development this is a this is a this is the main uh, you know this is the main function of the y chromosome but there is some sort of a suppression of the of the of one of the x chromosomes in female which occur you know when the cell uh, when the embryo started to be around 200 cells and this is occur independently of the other cells and this inactive through uh, uh, it's always fixed and we have a center for inactivation in this X chromosome and this is uh, present close to the centromere so any uh, genes away from the centromere 
they have less inactivation compared to, the, to those close to the centromere. So this will show us uh, a, we can say, a, a, a phenomena called line hypothesis. And we can see it even using buccal smear or even in a bar body in neutrophils. Uh, by taking in the buccal smear, we just take, uh, we can say, smear from the buccal mucosa and we stain it with GIMSA and we sh it show it like a nuclear material close to the nuclear membrane, it's called the bar body. And uh, in, in the case of the neutrophils, it's called drumstick, as we see here. So here, as we see in the bar body, it is a nuclear material close to the, you know, close to the nuclear membrane. And here, this is a drumstick of the neutrophils. So when we speak about to, to define the sex of the embryo, so we can use this as a simple way of defining it, or even in a quick way of defining the, the sex of the, of, the, of the person in case of intersex problems and others. So in this, uh, you know, in line hypothesis, we count it as the number of the X chromosomes, you know, uh, minus one. So in males, we don't have bar body or drumstick. And in females, we have one uh, uh, bar body or drumstick. But in some uh, health problems, especially chromosomal aberrations, if we have an extra X chromosomes, we may have more than one bar body or more than one drumstick. Then we'll go to the important part of our presentation, which is about chromosomal aberrations. In chromosomal aberration, we divide into, into two main groups. First one is the numerical aberrations, where there is change in the number. As we said before, in somatic cells, human somatic cells, it has 23 pairs of chromosomes. So if we have an extra complete set of chromosomes and co call it polyploidy, either triploidy, tetraploidy, pentaploidy, just, you know, any multiplication of the number of 23. And you have another group called an euploidy, which is not the number or identical number of 23, which is known as we say 23 pairs of chromosomes. So either we have what we call a trisomy, and trisomy we have an extra chromosome, and monosomy we have less chromosome. We'll speak about them when we speak about the different chromosomal, can say, syndromes. And then we have either mosaicism, or which is a mosaic, like a mosaic, where we have different populations of, of cells. Some of them could be 47, others 45, others 46. So we have different population of cells in the same embryo. And there are chimera. Chimera is, it's like, you know, like the, you know, the old Greek myths where they have you know, like uh, like the Sphinx, you know, uh, an animal with a body of of lion and the head of a man. So in Chimera, we have complete confusion of two zygotes. So we have a mix of this DNA. And if there will be incomplete fusion, we we see what we, which is commonly known as a simian twins which is, are the joint twins. Then we have the group of structural aberrations, which we we'll speak about later on. An important part of chromosomal aberrations, uh, the important about it, that in stillbirth and spontaneous abortion, especially in the first trimester, 50% of it are due to chromosomal aberrations which is shows how important it is in diagnosis of some important, you know, uh, causes of primary sterility or even secondary sterility in some times. And then 
we are not going to go all through these but it just shows a probability of having a child or having a chromosomal aberration in the you know in the body polyploidy which is as i said when we have multiplication of the exact multiplied number of the haploid number uh, of the chromosomes so normally we have 2n but if we have 3n or 4n we start to have this what we call polyploidy so it is a frequent finding in abortions as i said especially in the first trimester we and so we have two types of it either auto polyploidy when all chromosome sets come from the same species and allo polyploidy chromosome sets come from two or more different species so in polyploidy in humans it, it just causes, as we see here, this triploidy, it causes early abortion. In aneuploidy, most of it are due to what we call it non-dejunction. You remember when we spoke about separation of the two, chromosome, two chromatid into each pole of the cell. We call it, it a process of disjunction which are which is separation of the two identical chromatids to each pole of the cell if this separation doesn't happen it's called it non-disjunction so these two joint chromosomes just go only to one side of the cell and this when it occurs in gametocytes it gives us you can say sperms or ovum either an extra chromosome like 24 chromosomes or less chromosome like you know 22 chromosomes so non-disjunction is the failure of the chromosomes to go to the opposite pole as i said and it is it may happen during mitosis one or m2 in meiosis which is again a very important you know thing to know that when the, you know the ovum or uh, we can say the ovary or the uh, testis exposed to certain uh, uh, you know teratogenic substances like special viruses to radiation to certain chemicals especially chemotherapy this may cause this sort of uh, uh, abnormalities and it increases with age especially this as we say chromosomal abnormal and disjunction increase with age and in this curve as we see you see this is the, the green one which is all chromosomal aberrations and the red line it's mainly about down syndrome and as we see here that there is a sharp increase in the in the number of chromosomal aberration occur after the age of 35 so we always advise women to get their own or to have their own kids early you know before the age of 35 and if they just got kids after that or they they were pregnant it is also it is mainly advised to get uh, chromosomal studies called amniocentesis which i spoke with you about you know when we spoke about you know, uh, uh, antenatal diagno diagnosis. So this could be offered for uh, what we call an older mother, more than 35 years of age. As we see here, this is a Down syndrome. In Down syndrome, we have trisomy 21. We show, as we see here, chromosome 21, which is one of the acrocentric chromosomes. We have three copies of it instead of two copies okay so this is the trisomy 21. in trisomy 21 is the most common surviving chromosomal aberrations and it is characterized with important characteristics first with a mental retardation with a microcephaly uh, and characteristic facial features with upward slanting of the eyes uh, depressed bridge of the nose, small nose, 
small mouth and protruded tongue and as we see is always a lovely face of those kids and these are the most commonly surviving chromosomal aberration we have other congenital anomalies especially heart anomalies and the most common one in down syndrome is endocardial cushion defect but we may have other congenital anomalies like duodenal atresia imperforate anus hirschsprung disease and cryptorchidism and there, we, there is increased risk of leukemia and other malignancies in Down syndrome. So in Down syndrome, it's important really to know, especially in non-disjunction type, that it occurs in an older mother and it has very special characteristics and congenital anomalies, multiple congenital anomalies. We have other types the first one which is the most common type which we call it non-disjunction type which occur in 95 percent of the cases but we have other types like four to five percent caused by what we call translocation between chromosome 21 and another acrocentric chromosome which is either from group d 13 14 and 15 chromosomes or chromosome 21 or 22 <clears throat> or mosaic as i said we have two different population either 47 or 46 so we have a mosaic of both the translocation cases are we have two types i either heritable type or sporadic type Heritable type that means that when we examine either the father or the mother, we found that they have in their cells this type of translocation, but it is in a balanced form that they don't show the uh, signs or symptoms of Down syndrome, but their cells carry this translocation. Or the other type, which is a sporadic type, which is a new mutation process that happened in their uh, ovary or during the preparation or during the process of the zygote formation. So this is our, what we call the sporadic type. And most common translocation occurs between chromosome 21 and chromosome 14. It's called translocation 14-21. The importance of knowing that is that the recurrence risk of cases of translocation uh, Down syndrome is much higher than the non-disjunction type and that, uh, you know, applies only to the heritable type of translocation. So in non-disjunction trisomy 21, as you say, differ by maternal age. So if the mother is less than 30 years of age, the prevalence of it is less than 1 in 1500. While in women between 30 and 34 years of age, it's 1 in 700. And then it rises rapidly between 35, to, uh, between age of 35 to 39 into 1 in 300. And then above 40, it is 1%, and even above 45, it's even more than that it's about two percent however a sporadic translocation as i said is like non-disjunction so it had the same we can say uh, 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 recurrence risk like non-disjunction however heritable translocation if it is between uh, chromosome number 21 and chromosome 14 or 13 or 22 or others if the mother is a carrier, the possibility of recurrence is about 15%, while if the father is a carrier, the recurrence risk is about 5%. If the translocation is between chromosome 21 and 21, recurrence risk is 100%. So that's why it's important for us, you know, if the case is a translocation when we examine the, the blood of the child and we found that uh, is a case of translocation down 
that we have to examine his parents to know if he's if he's a case of a sporadic translocation or it is a heritable type in order to give the right recurrence risk possibility to his parents. We have other important trisomies like Edwards syndrome or trisomy 18 and its incidence is about one in four thousands. It's more among females with again mental retardation, growth retardation, microcephaly, hypotonia, hands clenched fists, eyes again microphthalmia, congenital heart, especially VECT or patent ductus arteriosus. And so but it has it's always have a high and early mortality, maybe about at the age of three months. And trisomy 13, again, a Pateau syndrome, is again, uh, you know, with a prevalence of 1 in 8,000, which is characterized by hypotonia, mental retardation, gross retardation, microcephaly, cleft lip or, pa or cleft lip and palate, and uh, microphthalmia, and again, congenital heart defects like VSD, patent ductus arteriosus, polydactyly. So we have different types. And again, the lifespan is uh, is pretty short, is less than six months. So in mosaics, as I said, a mosaic organism which is derived from a single fertilization, but which contains cells of two or more different chromosome compositions or different populations of cells, as I said, and it. Most of probably it, it happened due non-disjunction of the chromosome, which occur early during the process of, you know, uh, morula formation early. Chimera, as I said, which is, uh, uh, you know, the fusion between two zygotes. And when it is incomplete, it causes what we call simian twins. The other important group of chromosomal aberrations are the structure aberrations. And structure aberrations are either translocation, this is a part of uh, two non-homologous chromosomes are joined, where we have different types, different like Robertsonian translocation, reciprocal translocation, tandem and insertion, or deletion, which is a part of chromosome is lost or removed. Ring chrom chromosome, which the ends of the chromosomes are joined together to make a ring. And inversion, where, as we said, we have a different structure, we can say arrangement for the gene on the chromosome. So we found that there is up or down, uh, you know, or change in the, you know, the arrangement of the uh, of the genes on the chromosome or duplication which is duplication of a certain part of the chromosome. The most important type of translocation which you call Robertsonian type. The Robertsonian type of translocation occur between two acrocentric chromosomes. Do you remember them? Which are group D, 13, 14 and 15 and D which is 21 and 22. Reciprocal translocation can occur between any two chromosomes with exchange of unidentical segments if it's between similar chromosomes or between uh, uh, two different chromosomes. And this is the grammatic of the types of chromosomes, as we say, translocation, Balanced reciprocal, as I said, between two different chromosomes, and the Robertsonian between two acrocentric chromosomes, and then we have the isochromosomes, deletions, ring, and inversions. So, so we have different types, like center, centric fusion, translocation, where there is, you know. 45XX, translocation 1421, 
uh, which is between chromosome 14 and 21, Robertsonian translocation of a child. We have another one which is chromosome deletion. And this one is very common. It's called Credusha, which is 5P minus, where we have deletion of material from the short arm of chromosome number 5, which is char characterized by cat like cry due to laryngeal hypoplasia when the child was, was born it has a very you can say soft and very low voiced uh, low pitched voice which is that's, that's why it's called like cat like cry but they are characterized by microcephaly moon face micrognathia and hypertelurase and they have some uh, mental retardation gross and development retardation then we go to another group of chromosomes which are the sex chromosome abnormalities and sex chromosome abnormalities we'll discuss some models of them like turner syndrome which is 45 x o you know so, uh, syndrome climb filter male syndrome, triple X syndrome, and 47XYY male. So in Turner syndrome, we have a loss of one of the X chromosomes in a female, so it's called 45XO. So we always give the whole number of the chromosomes in the cell, and then we, we put the X chromosome, either XX or XY. In this case, we have a special characteristics, which is low posterior hairline, webbing of the neck, and then they, they, most of the time they are short, they have a streak ovaries and infertility, mainly they have uh, uh, primary, sterility, uh, primary sterility, wide spaced uh, nipples, and coarctation of the aorta, which is a common congenital heart disease in these cases and in the young children it's only apparent in the form of peripheral lymphedema which is most of the time is difficult really to detect and then there is cubitus valgus which is high uh, you know carrying angle in the uh, you know in, uh, in you know in in the hands okay this is a turner syndrome so it's short stature normal mentality webbing of the neck cubitus valgus and as i said lymphedema uh, in the dorsum of the feet of uh, young children at puberty absence of secondary sexual characters and primary sterility and in the heart a coarctation of the aorta horseshoe kidney and sometimes they are characterized by auto, some of the autoimmune disease, especially hypothyroidism. And we have some treatment that they can give them a better, you know, growth by giving them estrogen at the age of puberty and growth hormone to increase their height. The other important syndrome is Klein filter male syndrome, which is 47XXY. So in this case, when you go in the line hypothesis, when you go to the bar body, you remember when we spoke about the male, we have only X, Y, so we don't have bar body or drumstick. But in the case of climb filter, we have two X's, so we have a male with a bar body and with a uh, drumstick in his neutrophils. In this case, it's 47XXY, as I said. Why make them males? Normal mentality, again, tall stature, inchoate habitus, like a female habitus, lower segment is more than the upper segment, hypogonada, small testis, gynecomastia, female pattern of body hair, primary sterility, and we can treat those uh, you know, these cases with testosterone to
to alleviate most of their signs. Then the other sex chromosomes, either 47XYY, which has a prevalence of 1 in 1000, mainly it means usually tall, have some acne, acne ridden, slightly subnormal intelligence, normal gonads, and sometimes because they have a, you know, a, a, a lot, they have a high height, uh, so they are, uh, you know, they are famous for criminality because of their strengths. And then we have the other syndrome, which is 47XXX, which is triple X female. Again, its prevalence is one in one thousand. It's mildly tall females, normal intelligence or mild mental retardation, and sometimes we have occasional fertility problem. Thank you very much.